In this video, I want to talk to you about some creative ways of using polydrone frameworks. This first set is the Archimedean Solids Standard Set. With it, you can create the 13 Archimedean Solids, but not all at the same time. It's the standard set. If you want to have all 13 at the same time, there's a larger version of this. Most of the figures I'll be using in this video come from this set. This is the Polydrome Frameworks for grades 6 through 10. So let's get started. These are the different types of framework pieces available in the different classroom sets. But be aware that not all pieces are in all sets. So please read the descriptions carefully before purchase. And these are the pieces that are available in the Archimedean Solid Standard and Class sets, but not necessarily in these colors. It is very easy to connect frameworks pieces. First, make sure you see some words on one side of the piece. And then on a hard, flat surface, just go ahead and snap them together. If you can't, just go ahead and just turn it around, and then they very easily snap together. In fact, with practice, you don't even need the table. You can just have it in your hand, and they snap together nicely. So we have our first figure, a tetrahedron, one of the platonic solids. And now joining the tetrahedron are the other platonic solids. The cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron all very easily created using frameworks. When creating your frameworks models, you have a number of choices. First, you can use frames of all the same color, which I think looks very nice. Or you can use different colors, for example, to emphasize the base of a pyramid with one color and the sides with another. Or you can just use multicolors like this. While I have these tetrahedras out, I want to give another example of a larger scale version using small equilateral triangles to create the faces. Here's an example of a larger cube. So you can actually have students compare this size with the original cube. Have them discuss the length of the edge of each face and the volume. When creating pyramids using frameworks, you have a number of options. First, you can just make the base the same color as the rest of the sides, or just change the color. Another option I discovered is to create the pyramid with a regular polydrawn piece. That way you can emphasize area of the base times the height of the pyramid. You can emphasize the height even more by, for example, using a pipe cleaner, which can be easily inserted. And then the students can measure the length of the pipe cleaner to find the height. Then with that, you can find the volume of the pyramid. In the Pyramid Ted video, I talked about the difficulty of creating a pentagonal-based pyramid using small equilateral triangles. However, they snap easily together using a frameworks piece. Now, this really doesn't look like a pyramid, it's more like a cup. So, I just place an extra pentagon piece and hold it like this in my hands. It's not snapped in, it's just one on top of the other like that. But now you have a very nice pyramid. Of course, you can do the opposite. 
use framework pieces for the sides of the pyramid and a regular polydrum piece for the base. And this looks actually quite nice. Now I want to showcase a few triangular base pyramids. These two are of course tetrahedrons, but I'm now emphasizing the bases using the regular polydrum shapes. And you can again talk about the proportionality of these solids. Again, using regular polydrum triangles for the bases, I can emphasize the base for the different pyramids. These two are actually consist of the same exact pieces, except I can emphasize the bases in a different manner. One has a right triangular base, one's a small equilateral triangle. Here are some examples of pyramids using quadrilaterals for the bases. These two have square bases and are proportional. This is one rectangular base pyramid, and here's another. This one uses a rhombus for its base. When creating prisms, one method is to just make the bases one color and the sides another, or all different colors depending on what you want to do. Another option is to use the regular polydrum pieces for the bases. Now let's quickly look at several other prisms. First, triangular base ones. Here's one with a small equilateral triangle and large equilateral triangle. The prisms you see now have irregular quadrilaterals for bases. This one uses a large equilateral triangle and an isosceles triangle for the base. The other one has a right triangle and an isosceles triangle to create the base. As you can see, kites can also be used for bases of prisms. I'm using a right trapezoid to create the base of this prism. And an isosceles trapezoid for this one. You can think of these three prisms as prisms with parallelograms for bases. This one uses two isosceles triangles. This one also uses two isosceles triangles, but in a different way. This one has two right triangles. These can also be considered oblique prisms if you just place them on the rectangles. And speaking of oblique, Here's an example of an oblique prism where each face is actually a rhombus. There are a variety of hexagonal based prisms you can create using frameworks. Here's the first example. You can make it taller by just adding more squares or rectangles. You could also use small equilateral triangles for the bases. 
Here's a prism that has an irregular hexagon for the base. I'm using isosceles triangles to do that. I use two octagon pieces in the Archimedean solid standard set to create this prism. And likewise, I use a decagon piece to create this prism. Antiprisms look great using frameworks. These first two have small equilateral triangles for the bases. This one is actually a regular octahedron, just color coded to be an antiprism. This one has isosceles triangles for the sides. And you can think about it, maybe it's an antiprism that has an isosceles triangle for the base. Hmm, just like this one here. Or it's an oblique antiprism with a small equilateral triangle for the base. Something to think about. Hmm. And other things. It's an irregular octahedron. So something to talk about with the students. And finally, here's one with a large equilateral triangle for the base and right triangles for the sides. These two below are square base antiprisms. This one uses small equilateral triangles for the sides. This one uses right triangles for the sides. The square is also created using right triangles. Pentagonal base antiprism. Hexagonal base antiprism. Here are a couple examples of dipyramids or bipyramids. They both have bases that are pentagons, but this one is an irregular shaped pentagon. And this one is a regular one. Complicated stellations can easily be created using frameworks. This is just one simple example. Now I want to take a moment to talk about a few applications of frameworks. Here you can use to demonstrate the Pythagorean theorem. You can also take these pieces apart and place them on top of the blue square to prove the Pythagorean theorem. Once you tell students about the Pythagorean theorem, you can apply it to this situation of finding the diagonal of a cube. I'm using pipe cleaners to create the inner right triangle. Here's a great way to show students the relation between area and perimeter for an enclosed corral. The fence is created using square frameworks pieces. You can also use the rectangular pieces. Let's see what kind of figures we can make. Of course, all the perimeters will be the same, but the areas will be different depending on the shape. Here we have a one by seven corral. This is a two by six. three by five. And of course, the one with the maximum area, the four by four. Another thing you can do with these pieces is glue small magnets to the back of the pieces and then place them on magnetic dry erase boards for presentation purposes.
An extra bonus is that they are great templates. You can actually draw very nice figures. And then just carefully remove the piece from the board. Here's a unique way of using both the regular polydrawn pieces with frameworks. I created place value arrows. The framework pieces are slightly raised, so the pieces are easier to grab. So if I'm given this specific situation with the base 10 blocks, I can write down using a dry erase marker 1,000, 300, 50, and 8. Then I just carefully place the pieces on top of each other, making sure they're lined up with the triangles. And I get the number I'm interested in. Here's a variation on using frameworks pieces for place value. The pieces are color coordinated with the base 10 blocks. I also place small magnets on the backs of the pieces so they stay firmly in place. To finish this video, I want to share with you the Archimedean solids I created using frameworks. Now I borrowed pieces from both sets that I have, so the colors may not necessarily be the same as you would have using Archimedean solid standard set or the class sets. Here are the first two solids. Okay. 